on record. All right. Um, and Ms. to answer Ms. Austin, uh, did, if I don't, if I didn't, if you don't receive an answer within 24 hours for any of my email, uh, shoot me another email because I probably didn't get it. Um, Gmail and Yahoo are are going straight to our spam and we're losing a lot of emails. Uh, in the past, it usually maybe 10%, but now it's almost 30% of personal emails are going straight to our spam. So for future reference, try to use your, um, your official Stratford email when communicating with the school or your professors. Um, let's uh, deal with some public service announcements. Of course, it is uh, December 6th. This is week nine out of a week 10 system. Next week is your uh, final exam. That's December 13th. Your final exam will be on here. Um, there'll be instructions on your, um, uh, on your announcements and you'll submit only the answers uh, via email. OK, and make sure you get a confirmation uh, that morning and it'll be the same time frame on December 13th. The exam will officially start at 9 a.m. around 855 or so. That's when I put up the exam and the announcements. And then uh, you have until 1015 a.m. to email me um, um, the, you know, uh, your, your answers. OK, and if you're having difficulty, you have my cell phone. Now, again, one more. Because one more reminder to everyone, uh, I am because after this term, I am no longer with Stratford University. So uh, you will have um, uh, new advisors. And I believe they already assigned all of my people who have a last name uh, with the letter L or M onto the letter Z already with Dr. Rana Hassan. OK, so if you didn't get an email from her yet, uh, I'm gonna put um, uh, I'm gonna put her email in the chat right now. Stratford.edu. And if you have a name, a last name or surname that begins with either A and ends with the letter uh, K or L, that would be Dr. Hideri. And I'm gonna put. Um, uh, his email as well, okay? But I can still help you until like about the 20th or 23rd. I forgot when's my last day. I think it's the 23rd. But I could still I could still help you to an extent. Um, but please register for classes, um, you know, especially before uh, Christmas because over the holiday break, every, no one really looks at their emails. Um, so uh, make sure to, you know, get everything hammered away. Another public service announcement is all of you who applied for a nursing for term one, they've already started emailing out acceptance letters. So if you didn't get one yet, well, um, you probably didn't get in. So um, they're going to, I already requested that early this morning, a, um, um, a list of all those who didn't get in and a rationale why. Now, typically School of Nursing doesn't have to tell you why they didn't, um, uh, they didn't accept you, but um, they only have to inform you that you got accepted or not. Um, uh, so if you didn't get accepted, please speak to your academic advisor or with me uh, before the 20th or the 23rd, and uh, we could figure out um, uh, a plan on what to do, okay? Uh, and it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you didn't get in this time, uh, you have the opportunity to apply again term two, because remember, you now have lots of competition now. Um, uh, I can't remember the, the, um, the official number who are, who are applying for essentially 12 or 13 spots, but the, uh, my, my number was around the 40s, 44, 43, um, and heaven knows how many in Woodbridge also applied to Alexandria. So remember, you have competition. So maximize your grades, maximize your T-score. And not only, even though they look at your, um, your reading comprehension as the primary uh, source for decision, 
let's say, for example, it's between you and another person and you have similar uh, reading scores. They're going to start looking at your math and your science scores uh, and the other T scores. So don't gone are the days where, oh, I'm just going to I'm just going to ace my reading comprehension and I'm not really going to pay attention to the other scores. And I think uh, I think we're going to be. Um, and I don't quote me on it. And again, I'm not going to be part of this university anymore. So I, I uh, they're not going to let me in on the loop of any future plans anymore. But um, I think they're leaning towards uh, having and uh, uh, looking at your overall T score, just like every other um, nursing school. So please, the, the ultimately the um, the message is you know, uh, bring your game to the next level. And those of you who did get in, definitely bring your game to the next level because um, your your NSG core courses are no joke. Uh, they are they are significantly more challenging academically than um, your current classes. Now, for this class, of course, uh, we mentioned that um, the final exam. And I'll probably have all grades in by Saturday noon uh, um, following the Monday after the 13th. So I believe that's December 18. OK, so if you if you missed anything from week five onward, uh, try to get it in. Uh, so at least you'll have some partial credit so that, uh, again, back to the message of maximize your grade. OK. So um, I'm going to go briefly over uh, the integumentary system because you guys are pros and you also have videos already. It's already been eight weeks of me yapping. So um, where is here? So I'm just going to go over it uh, rudimentary. And then right after, I'm going to uh, post an, an old exam that I had from a year ago. And then we're going to go over some of those questions. And then I'm going to make those, um, uh, I'm going to make that old final exam as a practice exam. And I'm going to put that on the announcements. And I'm just going to go over it, uh, go over that as well, so that you'll have a you know, a full idea on how your final exam is going to look, because it's going to look very different from your midterm. It's still multiple choice, 50 items, but it will be done in a clinical vignette format that is similar to your NCLEX. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So the integumentary system, and again, don't ask me why we put chapter three all the way at the end of the and uh, this should have been in the beginning, but hey, again, I'm not the one who uh, designed it. But hey, some of you already did your in, uh, integumentary system uh, because you guys went straight down the line. But this is chapter three. Now, integument, that's, of course, skin. And the experts of skin is derma, your department of dermatology. OK, and if you look at the skin, it's a living, breathing thing. It has arteries, veins. You got some fat here. There's hair growth here, and there's layers. And the prefix epi means on top of. So the epidermis has to be the one on the top. Dermis, one in the middle. Something that's sub, the prefix underneath, so subcutaneous. Cutaneous is another word for a skin. So your subcutaneous tissue, and you can see there's a lot of fat in there as well. Okay, so this will help you regarding layers, medical terminology. Um, in anatomy and physiology and other future classes like um, uh, pathology. So you look at, start looking at when, when you study, well, not start, I hope you've been doing it, like grouping things together. I've been saying that since like week one or week two. So if you see something like fat and there's one, two, three letters on it, three combining forms on it, doesn't that look like a beautiful all of the above question? Which of the following words um, uh, uh, have to do with fat, adipocele, lipocyte, and steatitis, of course, all three. And adipocele, of course, herniation of fat. Remember, anything that's sticking out where it shouldn't be sticking out, and fat has its own place. So if it's sticking out, let's say, out of the subcutaneous tissue, and then weeping into your dermis, then that's an adipocele. Lipocyte, of course, fat cell, steatitis, inflammation, or infection of fatty tissue. And remember what inflammation infection is. Um, um, fat has a function. It's supposed to 
um, be a storage for glucose. It's also supposed to be a cushion. It's also a good insulator, especially for things like this, like a nerve. So um, it's kind of important. And if these things go bad, like in steatitis, you have inflammation or infection of it. It can get swollen. It can get painful, redness, irritation, warmth, all the things that we know that itis is. Skin, cutaneous, uh, uh, dermatic, derma, dermal, right? All of those mean uh, pertaining to skin. Dermatology, dermatologist, the expert. And the dermatologist is an MD. Um, dermatology gets a lot of, um, I don't know, like snickers from like uh, the more you know, the more, uh, for lack of a better term, the, the, the more interesting uh, departments, but skin is just as important. It's the first thing you look at when you meet somebody and it is the barrier. So uh, to a lot of pathologies. So if your skin goes bad, things go through it and then uh, you don't have that protective layer. So a lot of times dermatology gets a kind of a bad rap because they don't have any real emergencies. Their outpatient really is um, in, in, in residency, we used to call it benign. Uh, when you go into a dermatologic uh, rotation, it's usually benign. Your day is nine to five, nothing really crazy. There's only one real emergency and that's Rias syndrome or Ray's syndrome. Uh, that's a severe allergy uh, and is related to um, um, aspirin, which is rarity, right? Not a lot of people take aspirin anymore. Um, so they get a bad rap, but that's an MD. And um, that person went through the same, uh, uh, the, the same boards, the same, you know, uh, intensive training that the surgeon did, that the internist, uh, nephrologist and everybody, neurologist, everybody else. Hypodermic, I'm just saying, because uh, uh, I have a friend of mine, she always says stuff like, and she's a dermatologist, she always says stuff like, like, well, it's not like I am. I'm like, no, it isn't, it's something different, but it, I don't know. It seemed like she always put down dermatology, you know, like, but dermatology was one of those um, interesting um, uh, little respites in, in between like hardcore things like surgical service was really hard. <laughs> Uh, your internal medicine service is very hard. Um, there's 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 certain um, departments that are just a little bit a ben, little bit more benign. Um, okay, uh, and uh, the slang that we use for uh, departments that are really hard, where you don't sleep and it's really really challenging, we say the word toxic. Um, so what was a uh, nephro nephrology? That was really toxic. That was hard uh, doing dialysis, and you're up all the uh, up all day, um, and also surgical because you know uh, internal medicine. We do a lot of post surgical stuff. All right, enough on that. Hypodermic. You got a hypodermic needle. It has to go into the subcutaneous hypo underneath derm skin. Uh, sweat. Um, hydroadenitis, so inflammation or infection of your um, sweat glands, okay? Sudoresis is the same thing as hyperhidrosis, and that's profuse sweating. And most likely, that's a neurologic, if someone can't stop sweating. Ichthyosis, when you have dry, scaly skin. Keratosis, similar. But ichthyosis, is more, it's more scaly, more flakes off. Keratosis is... Um, you know, it's more hardening of the skin. You have a cancer, uh, melanoma, right? Uh, the cancer is dark brown colored black. So that's their OMA uh, tumor, melan, of course. And your melanocytes, that's what gives people color. Um, um, and the darker skin you have, the more melanocytes you have. The more melanocytes you have, the more um, protection you have with sunlight. But remember, even if you are dark skinned, having extended exposure to UV radiation and sunlight, you still, you know, you still should protect yourself. You, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's rarer if you're darker skinned to get cancer, but you can get it. So, you know, uh, be careful out there uh, on the beach. If any of you are 
<laughs> in this weather. Well, if anyone's going on vacation, going to the beach. Uh, dermatomycosis, okay, fungal infection, osis, abnormal condition of my skin. Onychomalacia, your nails. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who go to your nail place, make sure they have all their Department of Health stuff. And by the way, in Virginia, the Board of Nursing uh, oversees uh, nail places and massage places too. Uh, pilo needle or pilo nidal, or I don't know, potato, potato. Needle or nidal, needle is pertaining to nest, or like, a, like a bunch. So a, like a nest or a bunch of hair. And that cyst, when you look at it, when you cut it open, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's dermoid material. It looks like hair, but it isn't. Okay. Um, so it looks like hair, skin, and sometimes it looks like little bits of teeth. It's the weirdest thing. Look, you can Google it. Trichopathy, any disease of your hair. Okay. Uh, and you can have disease of your hair. Your hair is made out of proteins. And if you don't eat right and uh, you take certain chemicals, the hair starts falling out. Your hair will start uh, getting um, uh, changing color and, uh, and changing consistency. Scleroderma, again, back to hardening. Okay. But remember, sclera also means the, uh, the white parts of your eye. But the white parts of your eye also are a hard layer of your eye, which also protects your eye as well. You have um, oil glands in your skin, in your dermis, and those are your sebaceous glands. And the oil that it secretes is sebum. You need oil in your skin to keep your skin soft and supple. That's why when you feel a baby's skin, it's very soft and very pliable, but you, you feel your grandma's skin, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it doesn't snap back and it's, and it's a uh, very, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? What's the opposite of not pliable? It doesn't stretch back. Uh, squamous cells, they're cells that look like shingles or um, they're, they're skin cells. And when you look at them on the microscope, they look like, they're not, they look like scales. To me, they look like shingles on a roof, but hey, to each his own. Xeroderma, now that is dry skin or abnormally dry skin. And it's mild. Ichthyosis is when it's bad, when it starts peeling off and then, you know, you, the, the peel off the layers and there's a little bit of blood underneath there. Pyoderma, pus, of course, in your skin, we got to get rid of that pus. Anything that's oid, like that pilonidal cyst, that's a dermoid cyst. It looks like skin. It looks like products of skin and hair, but it isn't really because oid, the suffix oid means it's resembling. It doesn't, it doesn't look, it looks like skin. It looks like skin products, but it isn't. So if you had a fibroid, it looks like fibers, but it isn't fibers. If you had osteoid, it looks like bone material, but it isn't really bone. Diaphoresis, that is profuse sweating right? Uh, it's just like a high, hyperhidrosis or sudoresis. But um, we usually use the word diaphoretic when, you know, when someone's fever breaks. If any of you have ever had a, like a really high fever of like, uh, one that I only experienced diaphoresis once in my life. I was like, uh, I was in my 20s and I had a really high fever. It's like 105. And I was like debating whether um, I should go to um, go to the emergency room or not. And um, I don't know, I went into the bathroom. Oh, and then I was like brushing my teeth or something. I was looking at myself in the mirror. And then the next thing you know, I started sweating like crazy. I mean, like really sweating. Like if someone poured a, like a, a couple of glasses of water over my head. And then my fever went, went to 101. It's pretty neat. Oh, but uh, don't, don't let your fever get that, that far. But, you know, I was young, not too bright. I didn't have any medical training yet. So I was like, oh, being this de dehydrated and, and uh, being uh, this dizzy and, uh, and confused, I just thought it was normal. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Who knows? But diaphoresis, it's, it's similar to pseudoresis and hyperhidrosis. Uh, but uh, um, we use that diaphoretic term, usually when you're very, very high fever breaks, but you got a very, very high fever, especially if it doesn't respond to any NSAIDs like Tylenol, uh, go to the hospital, don't mess around because um, 
uh, greater than 105 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, closer to 106, your brain will start to cook. And when that happens, your brain will say, you know what? I don't like this atmosphere. I'm going to turn off for a little while. And you could easily slip, uh, lapse into a coma. It's not a good thing. Dermatoplasty, right? Remember we talked about mammoplasty, which is a breast job. It could be a breast reduction or breast augmentation. You could also have rhinoplasty, which is uh, um, you know, a nose job, okay? And uh, dermatoplasty, uh, typical repair. And we do a lot of that kind of thing, especially for burns. Cryotherapy, we do that to uh, get rid of uh, things like, uh, like uh, molds and skin tags. And it is, um, it's done with chemicals. So be careful when you're handling certain things if you're in the department of dermatology. And um, the old school cryotherapy stuff, there's this chemical that's on the end of a matchstick and the matchstick is typically colored blue. I made the mistake when I was a fourth year medical student, you notice I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I touched it on the edge of my palm and it burned a hole in the side of my palm. I had that scar for years. And it's because I, I was treating it like it was a match. I wasn't, I didn't glove up like I was supposed to. I didn't pay attention like I was supposed to. And I was, I was on the mail train. And I, I kind of leaned into it. I remember it hurt like the dickens. Wow. I just remember it felt like the knife was going through my hand, but it was actually the chemical uh, that we used to burn. Like, let's say, for example, you got a, like a mole right here, right? Well, instead of cutting it and then you got all these blood vessels, then you got blood or whatever, I can freeze it and then it'll like, you know, flake off. And the neat thing about either freezing it or cauterizing it, like, you know, with, um, uh, with heat is that it, it chemically or physically burns these arteries and veins over here. So, and that's called cautery. And uh, so that you won't bleed. That's pretty neat. And if it doesn't bleed, doesn't, uh, doesn't form a scab or a scar, it has less scarring. So it's pretty neat. Stratum. Strata is plural. So you're going to learn in anatomy and physiology that there's layers and that's how your skin protects itself. Uh, sub, hypoderma, ac. Oh, uh, this was already in my week two notes, right? All the suffix. Now, again, commercial for the final exam. There will no longer be questions like, what does this word part mean? Or what is the word part? It will be, the, the more of the questions will be like, more of the questions that you guys were creating on your uh, weekly discussions in your make a quiz, uh, you know, make a quiz exercises since week five. Um, bo -bo -bo -bo. I promised I wasn't going to lecture, but then I'm now, now I'm starting to lecture. But that's all right. Liposuction, lipo is fat, right? And uh, I'm not, I'm not a fan. It causes so much damage. And if ever you need any surgery, especially if they do lipo and tummy tuck combo, um, let's. How many times um, that the surgeons were like, "What the heck? I can't." Because every time you cut into or you mess with your insides, it forms scar tissue. And that's not a good thing. And then, so if you have any future surgery that we need to do, it's going to complicate matters. And liposuction, watch it. Watch it on YouTube. It's horrific. We take this big metal tube. It's kind of sharp on the end. It's called a trocar. And we poke and we make a hole and then we start poking all this area and it sucks it all out, sucks all the, the, the fat out. But uh, maybe I mentioned this in other lectures. If I decrease the number of adipocytes or the number of fat cells in your body, the ones that remain will compensate. And how? They'll get bigger. Remember, your fat, when you're used to a certain level of fat, when your body's used to that level, removing that fat quickly is not a good idea. But yeah, you look good, but uh, you'll have a considerable... Uh, uh, low fat, low salt diet. And if you don't keep that, you'll gain back all the fat and you'll be wasting your money. But honestly, uh, all the students from last year who had elective surgery 
And then they, some of them admitted to me what the surgery was. It was, it was some form of plasty or, or, or some like sort of tummy tuck or whatever. Uh, a lot of them didn't come back to school because the, for two, three, two reasons. One, the, um, the recovery time is far greater than what, uh, what the surgeon usually quotes. And number two, it's going to cost you. And that will affect what? The time off will affect your job. So when you really think about it, you know, really worth getting that nose job, really worth getting that, um, that uh, breast reduction. Or, well, breast reduction, I could see because um, I, had, uh, I had a friend in college that she had a breast reduction and because she had severe back pain because her breasts were so big, it, it ruined her posture and was already giving her um, some lower back issues. And she was only in her early 20s. So um, when she got her breast reduction, she was like, oh, like my, like my sides don't hurt anymore. I don't, I, 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 don't, um, I don't walk around in pain. And, and she's very happy. She was like, I can run. I never was able, um, she, she, she used to make the joke. I think the last time I went running, I was, she was like 11 um, because she got developed really fast. Hydro, we went over. Now, Hydra is not the same as hydro. Hydro, H-Y-D-R-O, is water. Hydr, H-I-D-R, that's sweat. It's two different things. Um, went over that nail. Remember, you could see a nail is an extension of your skin, just like your hair is an extension of your skin. They're called accessory organs. Here's a nice little chart that goes over the colors. And we probably went all these colors before, but there's a nice summary. So albino is white. So albinism, that means my patient doesn't have any uh, um, melanocytes or has very few melanocytes. And that's a problem because they'll be super exposed to UV radiation. Cyano is blue or like ashen colored uh, skin if you're a person of color. Erythro is red. Why do I keep on using that? Just to be politically correct, person of color. We all have color. If we didn't have color, we'd be black and white, which is ridiculous. Erythro, red, your red blood cells, erythrocytes, leukocytes, white blood cells, melanocyte. That's the cell that will protect us from UV radiation and gives us our skin color. It also gives us the eye color and hair color. And xantho is yellow. And a xanthoma, that's when it's actually a, a lipoma. It's when um, the fat starts, you know, uh, accumulating. If you if you have uh, hyperlipidemia, um, your fat will start accu accumulating in your uh, dermis, and it'll start weeping out, and it's gonna look yellow. It looks sweaty yellow. Oh, it's kind of gross. You can look it up. You can see it. I don't want to gross you out. Uh, oh, leukocyte, white blood cell. But if I add the suffix penya, that means it's 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 a decrease or deficiency. So it's a form of anemia. So if I have leukocytopenia, that means my white blood cells are decreasing. If my white blood cells are decreasing, I won't be able to fight off infection. Okay, and um, this is classic for, of course, AIDS when we have um, a massive drop in CD4 cells um, to the point where they're almost gone, which is scary because if you don't have your white blood cells, um, you won't be able to fight off infection. Um, melanoma, cyanosis, basal cell carcinoma. Mm, no, no we, went over, we went over all of these, these are good. AIDS, BCC, basal cell carcinoma, yeah, they, it's a uh, it's uh, relatively common in derma to use that term. BX, which is a capital B with a lowercase x, it's a biopsy. Um, usually, we don't say derm, say derma, and, and that's slang. Uh, um, if you want to know slang of all the departments, just take the uh, root word. Um, so dermatology, derma, uh, neurology, neuro. Um, uh, cytopath, uh, cytopathology lab, cyto, histo for histology lab, you know, and you just take that first part. 
And for, uh, for internal medicine, they just say I am or medicine. Uh, DX, capital D with a lowercase x is prognosis. Capital P with a lowercase x is prognosis, right? DX, diagnosis, P, prognosis. Capital H with a lowercase x is history. Capital T with a lowercase x is treatment. Capital M with a lowercase x is management. You get the idea. Uh, family history. Now, all the histories, all the capital H with X, you have, there's, let me go over all the history stuff. Put it at the end of this exam. So if I have history, so I could have stuff like uh, CC, which is chief complaint, HPI, history of present illness. Uh, um, uh, PMH, past medical history, SH, social history. Uh, what's the other so PMH? Uh, yeah, but these are these are uh, pretty much uh, the common uh, common histories, and of course, HX history, TX treatment, uh, BX biopsy, uh, MX management. Sometimes even PX or capital P, lowercase p, uh, this patient. I've seen PX before, but typically they usually this one or this one, but I've seen this before. Um, yeah, but that's, that's, that's some of the, and when you learn charting and stuff like that, you're going to learn all the abbreviations. And um, the neat part is that, um, oh, of course, the physical examination. PE, IND, incision and drainage, or irrigation and debridement, but it usually takes means incision and drainage. Let's say, for example, you had a uh, pus. Let's get a picture of it or a diagram. Oh, that's brutal. Okay, here you go. Let's look at this. So, you have, you do an I and D, incision and drainage. First, I have to incise, I've got to cut, right? And then I got to drain it out. So I got to get, I got to put something in here to, to uh, clear out this cavity. Sometimes we use like tubing like this. I use a Penrose tube uh, and it's, a, it's, the, it's that, you know, clear uh, opaque looking rubber tube that you, that you sometimes uh, we even use as a tourniquet. I could put it in here and then I could stick it out and then it drains, right? And if it's considerable, we put it, we put an actual drain in and we make sure like, this is just an example here, but we make sure the cut is gravity dependent. So let's say this is on the side of my patient's leg. I cut here. So when they're lying down or standing up or sitting down, it, it flows downwards. So it empties everything out. And that's an I and D. Now what's debridement? Debridement is when you have any, this word right here, debridement is when you have um, any necrotic tissue. Uh, and uh, if you got necrotic tissue, you would like to scrape all that stuff out. And uh, because it will, and um, I've mentioned this in other lectures, um, necrotic tissue or dead or dying tissue tends out to send a signal to living tissue like, hey gang, I'm dead, you should be dead too. So the normal cells start going, oh, you're dead? Okay, I'm gonna be dead too. And that's your tumor necrosis factor, your TNF, and that's never, that's never a good thing. All right, here's an abscess and that's full of pus. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna uh, do an IND here and it's gonna drain downwards. Alopecia, uh, that's uh, hair loss. Sometimes it's normal, sometimes it's not so normal. And it's related to uh, abnormal increases in testosterone for both male and female. 
uh, eczema, think rash, think allergy, right? Itching. Hemorrhage, now hemorrhage doesn't mean bleeding. Hemorrhage means a lot of bleeding, okay? Uh, so rash, R-R-A-G-E, -A -A uh, think what? A bursting forth. There's a lot, there's a lot of blood. Contusions, of course, is a bruise. Ecchymosis is another fancy word for a bruise. And petechia. Now, petechia is when, um, if you've ever, uh, do this at home, tie down your finger with a piece of string and look at your tip of your finger right before it turns like all white. It's gonna have like pink little dots and that's what petechia is. Oh, this poor baby with eczema. Uh, my Isabella used to be like this. She, uh, goes, my oldest son used to call her itchy scalp. Who the hell is? This might be important because it's my sister. Ah, legal stuff. Ugh, yucky. Hirsutism. If someone's hirsute, again, like too much testosterone, too little testosterone, you could go either way. You could lose your hair or you can get too much hair. Impetigo, psoriasis, scabies, nice to know. You'll learn all of that in your pathology class. Uh, you'll learn this in anatomy, the different, uh, uh, or your pathology classes as well, the different kinds of lesions, okay, and how to identify them. Different kinds of wounds, right? Excoriation, think what? You're scratching on top of a scratch. Fissure when, you know, it like caves in. Ulcer is when it, there's an actual hole. Ugh, the decubitus ulcer. This is what happens. And oh, by the way, see this black stuff right here? It's a little bit closer. See this stuff right here? All that? That's necrotic tissue. We have to cut all that out. Surgery has to go cut that out. Uh, Veruca. That's warts. We could deal with that with chemicals. This is vitiligo um, because of uh, patchiness of their melanocytes. Um, the lighter parts uh, um, won't be protected by um, uh, UV radiation, so or UV light or sunlight. So that will cause a problem in my patient. And also it's rough, like, you know, you, your skin's all that. So that's why nobody in the medical field was buying it when Michael Jackson was like, oh, I got vitiligo. No, you don't. You just want to put chemicals on your skin. Uh, you're going to have a scratch test, uh, scratch test, prick test for allergy. You know, you'll see that uh, if ever you're in dermatology or allergology. And allergology isn't derma. It's a, a separate, it's um. It's um, allergology is a sub subspecialty of immunology. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, electro desiccation. Oh, eh, this is an old term, fulguration. Um, uh, electro desiccation uh, means to you kind of like burn the skin, it, it burns it so much that it dries it out. Uh, oh, this is common, Mohs, right? Uh, we do uh, micro, uh, uh, we do little micrographs, meaning we take layer by layer by layer, and then we test every layer to see if it has cancer. And once we have no cancer, we take one more layer and then call it a day. Antibiotics, remember, antibiotics only kill bacteria. So if you have a viral infection, antibiotics are useless. If you have a mycotic infection, antibiotics are useless and they will actually cause in the future a uh, multi-systemic strains. And then you'll, you'll need stronger antibiotics to go deal with things. Um, being in internal medicine, that's the one thing I hate is giving out meds, but you, you'll see when you guys practice. Um, if a patient pays $55 for a 30 minute office visit, they're going to want something in return. They don't care what it is. They're like, Oh, I got a pill. If they don't get a pill, they feel they've been cheated somehow. I don't know. And, 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 and it's, that's part of our job is to educate the layperson that that's not how it works. But every day, 
when I used to practice, oh, I can even if I go in this room next to me right now, um, um, my wife is uh, um, a healthcare administrator where she is the direct liaison between the clinical and the, um, the administrative uh, arms of uh, INOVA. And she has to deal with patients every day complaining that, oh, why doesn't my doctor give me antibiotics? And the doctor and the nurse don't wanna answer the patient because they have better things to do than trying to have to explain this. And um, if you are into healthcare admin, or if you're still into helping people without, you know, the clinical blood and guts and in your face stuff, well, uh, healthcare admin might be for you. Antifungals, of course, or antimycotics, antipruritics, uh, they reduce itching. It's usually some sort of low dose narcotic uh, because what is itching? They run through the same fibers as, um, uh, as pain, right? So um, if I lower your pain, well, if I increase your pain threshold by giving you uh, some form of narcotic, then I might reduce the itching. Corticosteroids, when the inflammation gets so out of hand and it gets really bad, uh, we go for the big guns, but these have a lot of side effects. And one of the major side effects of corticosteroids is, um, 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 you're going to make your patient immunocompromised. It's going to lower your, uh, the patient's um, immune system, which sometimes is what we want to do. We want to do that sometimes. Okay, went through. So let's go over, and then this is a nice segue into um, looking at the, uh, the practice exam, which I'm going to put on, which was actually an exam I... I, I um, um, I administered in 2020. So we look at it. Mrs. Mears, a 39 year old uh, married woman presented for a skin cancer check. She readily volunteered information uh, that has spent a considerable time uh, out in the sun. So she has some history, but she has no uh, FH of, uh, of uh, skin carcinoma. So right off the bat, I could ask you, okay, uh, um, what department is Dr. Liu in? And you'll tell me, dermatology. What's the chief complaint of Mrs. Mears? She came in for skin cancer check. Does she have any history that will be of risk for her skin cancer? Yes, UV exposure, her job and or uh, um, uh, much of her time is spent outside. Does she have any family history? No, she does not. So I could ask. Those are the kind of questions that, that get asked every day in the real world, in the real job. And that's what your final will start to look like. Your final will look like, you know, um, you know I'll ask you, and you need to know how to read this and, and need to know how to translate and use your medical terminology powers to get the answer. So I'll ask things like, does she have any family history of uh, carcinoma? And you'll tell me what? No, right? Uh, what was her chief complaint? You have to know that you got to look up here, not down here. Um, she has idiopathic gutate hypomelanosis. So what happened to her melanocytes? Were they increased or decreased? Hypo, decreased. Idiopathic means that, uh, I don't know, what does an idiot usually say? I don't know, but that's how I remember it, but that's not what it really means. But idiopathic is what they call garbage pail diagnosis, which means that I have no idea where the hypomelanosis came from. So that's my, um, uh, what we call diagnosis of exclusion. Uh, she also has seborrheic keratosis. So what does that mean? Uh, she has oily, uh, um, oily uh, hardening where on the left, hardening of her skin on her left wrist. And she has a little bit of benign tumor, a cherry angioma on her left thigh. So I could ask, was it left, right, both, neither. Sun exposed areas. She has some solar keratosis. So hardening over her right zygoma. The zygoma is her cheek. And that's common for someone who works outside a lot. Okay, that's why if you've ever seen surfers, uh, I remember when I used to put it's stuff, it's zinc oxide. It protects you from uh, you know sunlight and and it's pretty much waterproof. 
And back in my day in like 80s, my gosh, it sounded like, you know, one of those old men on the stoop, like back in my day. Well, we used to put this stuff called Zinka. And uh, and where are the places you put on it? Just like football players and, 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 and baseball players, you put it over your, your cheek or your zygoma. Uh, because two things. One, that's where the sun exposed area is going to hit and it's going to get harder than usual. And two, reflections into your eyes. So uh, that um, it will re reduce, you know, bouncing of the sun sunlight into your eyes. She has excoriated acne lesions on her face. That means she has itching. So she kept on scratching it. And now there, there is a wound. And uh, she was advised regarding photo protection, meaning wear a hat, don't go outside. And then um, uh, we did, looks like they did a biopsy because they want to look at, um, uh, they want to look at the, the keratosis and the, um, and the hypomelanosis, and they're going to do a biopsy with liquid nitrogen uh, on an app applicator uh, to do one or two things. One, get rid of a whole bunch of things, and two, I want to also get a, uh, a sample and send to the lab. So that's or you could use these, look at these as well. Look, doesn't look the same of what I was asking. What are the predisposing factors? What did the uh, a doctor recommend uh, for the solar keratosis? What treatment did we use on this potential precancerous lesion? Did we use heat? Did we use cold? Did we use medication, right? And when is she supposed to come back, right? Doesn't say, right? Will return as required or PRN as needed. She has no return appointment. But if you guys are working in an office, get a return appointment. Even if it's like three, four, five months out, get a return. Always have that, that tie or that linkage uh, to your patient. Now, the second case, if you look at the history, you could do the same thing. You have the history, it's got a chief complaint, physical examination. So you have your subjective, your objective, your assessment, which is these diagnoses. And typically when we do a diagnose, uh, when we do diagnoses, a diagnostic list, the most important one is on top. So her psoriasis is the one of most important. And what's the plan? Um, uh, even though this looks like, uh, Dr. Dakota might be her, um, what do you call that? Um, her uh, primary care physician, but looks like maybe uh, Dr. Hendricks is uh, dermatology. Because if you're looking at this, there's a lot of dermatological problems or wants to see Dr. Hendricks for, um, for the potential for the abdominal pain and colitis. But you could see the abdominal pain and colitis is further down on the list. But if I, it goes, uh, but I could ask the question like, if Dr. Hendricks was a dermatologist, which of these diagnoses would they deal with? If Dr. Hendricks was um, a gastroenterologist, which of these diagnoses would he deal with or she deal with? Remember, you're in healthcare. It's actually safer to assume that the person you're referring to is female because odds are it is. So with that being said, that's the chapter, uh, uh, the last lecture. And what, and if you look at, because I, I get always one every term. Remember, your exam will be posted on announcements, but I always get somebody going into module 10 and then clicking on this final exam. This final exam is a nice practice, okay? And it's in module 10, but I repeat, and I'm being recorded, this is practice. If you submit this or do this and don't do the final exam that's posted on your announcements, you will get a zero. I repeat, this is practice, okay? This is not the real exam. The real exam will be posted on December 13th, week 10 at 8.55 a.m., okay? Now, when you're all said and done, uh, honestly, you can complete the survey, don't complete the survey. I'm, again, I'm, I'm but yeah, complete the survey, so, but typically uh, the survey, complete your survey definitely for your other classes because that's for your professor to know, uh, you know, uh, what are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? 
right? Um, uh, how can the course be better? That kind of thing. And that's your voice right here. So uh, complete your survey. But for me, it's not really as important because, you know, I'm on my way out. But I will be here for you until the very last minute of the very last day. It goes, and my, my cell phone is always good. So let's say, for example, it's January and you didn't look at your grade or I don't know, but look at your grade before the 18th or on the 18th. Uh, look at your grade and if there's and look at your grade now if there's anything missing email me now right not when i'm gone because when i'm gone um uh just to share a little bit as i always yap and share i will most probably be traveling overseas i'm gonna take a little bit of a sabbatical unless i get one of these other jobs that i've been looking for but uh, never know, never know how life's going to go. But odds are I'll be in my home country, the Philippines. Um, I wish it was on a beach, but doing some surfing. But I'll probably be doing some legal stuff for my baby girl. Um, I'm, I'm finishing up the adoption on my, my youngest one. So I can have a billion kids. That's my goal. Well, my wife's goal, at least. So please, my number will always be the same. And if you And please text me with your full name, what class it was in reference to, because I'm, I, I got, I got, let me look, let me, let me show you, not show you, but I have this. Need to upload from website. What do I do? I will be free after 2.30 PM. Who is this? Who is this person? I don't know. And it, it, I, so um, the more information you get, and again, Back to what I was talking about. Try to use your Stratford email because this Yahoo, before it wasn't really that bad. But now Yahoo and Gmail, I'm finding it all over my spam. And I'm sure that especially your adjunct professors aren't really looking at it. So let's look at the exam. Boop. As, a, as a review. So your best bet is, of course, look over the words of all the... Um, all the chapters that we went on from week five on through today, week five, six, seven, eight, and nine. But if you look at it, right? Let's look at the uh, uh, this uh, first one. 60 year old black female complains of prolonged pain and burning in her feet, more on the left than the right, as well as diminished proprioception and difficulty walking particularly in the dark, the history of her present condition uh, started uh, two and a half to three years ago. Additionally, she has been diagnosed with systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE by a military physician uh, and was referred to Dr. Reed who reportedly confirmed it in 2000, you know, for us 21. The patient has moderate intermittent low back pain, currently experiences less burning in the lower extremities, but there is still some numbness which is increased by sitting, driving, walking for a long time. She has no history of head or neck injury, meningitis or encephalitis. The only family history of neurologic illness is that her maternal grandmother had some type of seizure disorder and presently the patient is on disability due to all these problems. So this, the author of this is uh, Dr. Kensington or Kinston, Kingston, right? So, Look at her problems. Is it a heart problem? Is it a nerve or brain problem? Is it a, uh, a child uh, childbirthing problem? Or is it a children problem? So process of elimination, they didn't mention the heart. We didn't mention obstetrics. We didn't mention kids because she's 62. So what's her problem? It's neurology, okay? So we look at it, what kind of problem does our 62 year old have? Is it acute? Is it chronic? Oh, I spelled the word renal wrong. R anal is not a, not a word, this is supposed to be renal. But if I ask you acute versus chronic, how long had she had this problem, right? Her HPI states what? 2.5 to three years. So this is definitely chronic. If I talk about an acute case, it happened in the last 12 hours, happened in the last 24 hours. What was her family history? How would you describe her problem? Is it on one side, both sides, right? Both or neither. It can't be both or neither. It has to be one or the other, right? 
SLE is an autoimmune disease. What does the, this is like a fancy way of asking, what does autoimmune mean? Auto means self, immune means your immune system is attacking who? Attacking yourself, okay? And again, do your process of elimination, then check uh, what the question wants. And then once, if they match up, then what do you do? You move on with your day. Okay. Now here's another trick um, that a lot of people who take the NCLEX and other type of clinical vignette uh, questions, you can read the question first, right? Because these five questions belong to this. You can read the five questions first and then do what? Now you know what you're looking for. Then, uh, um, then you read um, uh, this, um, this little clinical story here. Okay. So go over that and you could see it's bits and pieces of what? Cases and ask, and there's certain kinds of questions that always pop up. What's the chief complaint? Why are they there? What are we doing to them? Or what did we do to them? Okay. Was it left? Was it right? Why did we do something, right? What is the diagnosis? Okay, what were the laboratories? So these are questions that would, that you need to know, not only need to know medical terminology, you need to know medical ter terminology in the context of the case. So this is good practice, okay? So I will, uh, I will have this exam, let's save it. And let's call it practice. This, is, this isn't your take home, this is a practice only. And I'll put that and I'm gonna put it at its top. I'll put it in announcements in a minute. Ooh, you know what? I should also save the changes like, for example, get rid of this craziness in the bottom. Get rid of this. get rid of the instructions and then call it practice only. Okay, this, save it. Okay, it is at this portion of the show, I will stop recording.